Please join with me. Let's take a deep breath. <sighs> Close our eyes. <clears throat> we see in the middle of our mind a little ball of golden light. We watch this light as it begins to grow larger and larger. Until now, it covers the entire inner vision of our mind. We see for ourselves within this light a beautiful temple. We see a garden that surrounds the temple and a body of water that flows through the garden. We see that the inside of the temple is lit as well by this same beautiful golden light. And we are here, for we have been drawn together by the power and in the presence of God. We devote our time spent together, our relationships to one another, to him. And we pray that the most Holy Spirit shall be upon us, lifting us above and beyond the energies, the fears, the limited thoughts that would obstruct us on our path. Rather, may love so infuse our very being that we are delivered from our own fears and become deliverers of others. And so it is, together, we all say, Amen. Amen. Now, the very fact that you're here tells me that you're not new to a spiritual conversation. I don't know how many of you are actually students of the Course in Miracles. Raise your hand if you're students of the Course. Even if you're not a student of the Course in Miracles, these concepts uh, will not be new to you. There is one truth with a capital T. It is spoken in many different ways, all the great religious and spiritual systems. And you are probably um, uh, aware of and comfortable with some of those, some of that language. I use the language of A Course in Miracles because I personally am a student of A Course in Miracles. The Course in Miracles doesn't have any monopoly on truth. It's just one statement of universal spiritual principles. Whatever uh, particular system you are most comfortable with, you will do better translating for yourself than if I try to translate all the time as we go along. These are universal spiritual principles. The course is based on universal spiritual themes. However, it does use very Christ-centered uh, language that we normally associate with the Christian religion. The course is not a religion. It is a psychological training in the relinquishment of a thought system based on fear and the acceptance instead of a thought system that is based on love. A Course in Miracles uses these terms in decidedly non-traditional, psychotherapeutically oriented ways. The Course in Miracles says religion and psychotherapy at their peak are the same thing because they both have to do with the healing of the mind. So we're going to be talking here today within the context of these terms, but once again in ways that have nothing to do with religious dogma or religious doctrine. All right, so the Course in Miracles says you think you have many different problems, but you really only have one, and that is your separation from God. So all of you were asked before you came here, um, what are some questions you might have? What are some issues you might be dealing with? The Course in Miracles is a psychological discipline, and I remind you that the word discipline comes from the same root as disciple. Discipleship is the same thing as psychological and emotional discipline. We live in a world where, and I have to say particularly today, and I also have to say particularly within the supposedly higher consciousness community, there is an endless fascination with analyzing the problem. There are people who brand their careers according to their particular analysis of the problem. And trust me, because I've been around for almost 40 years doing this, every season there's a new word that is the particular filter on the problem that all of us are supposed to somehow uh, join uh, in agreement around. The Course in Miracles is a very different kind of path. The Course in Miracles is not about endless analysis of a problem, and it would argue that endless analysis of the problem will not in and of itself get you to the solution. You can't get rid of darkness by hitting it with a baseball bat. You get rid of darkness by turning on the light. The Course in Miracles says that who you are is light. The Course in Miracles defines light as understanding. Who you are is love. 
the light in any situation that then casts out the darkness in any situation is knowing that you are love and disciplining yourself to align your thoughts with love. So you have a lot in today's traditional psychotherapeutic tradition, for instance, there's all this analysis of why you got this way. There's all this analysis of what's happening in the world and what your particular trauma is and what your particular victimization is. So let's get some stuff out of the way at the beginning. Living in this world is traumatic. Living on this planet is traumatic. So it's not, you know, this particular form that your trauma uh, uh, took necessarily. I'm not saying that those issues are not relevant, but I am saying that the endless analysis and what then that it, that endless analysis leads to an over identification with your problem. And what we want to do today is to remember you can't get rid of darkness by hitting it with the baseball bat. You turn out, you turn on the light. The love has the same relationship to fear that light has to darkness. You turn on the light, the darkness is gone. You turn on the love, the fear is gone. The fear was literally a misunderstanding in any situation. It was your misunderstanding of who you are, somebody else's misunderstanding of who you are, somebody else's misunderstanding of the world. It was all literally a misunderstanding. You dissolve the consequences produced by that misunderstanding by understanding. You dissolve the darkness by turning on the light. You dissolve the fear by turning on the love. The mind that is the fear finds that very insulting because since we have over-identified with the mind that is in pain, we have over-identified with the ego mind, which is a misunderstanding of who we are. The ego feels insulted and assaulted by any suggestion that we can do without it. And yet that is exactly what we are talking about today. We are not talking about denying our problems. We are talking, however, about denying their ultimate power over us. You cannot deny their ultimate power over you as long as you are identifying with the problem and the level of reality on which the problem exists. Problems do not exist in the level of ultimate reality. But as the Course in Miracles says, you are heir to the laws that prevail within the world you identify with. We are taught living on this earth to identify with what is basically no more than a mental construct. It is a mental construct that is born from the evidence of our physical senses. My physical eyes tell me you're over there and I'm over here. My physical eyes, my physical ears, my physical hands, my physical senses reveal to me the level of the body. We are separate, and on the level of the body, we're imperfect. On the level of the body, we all make mistakes. On the level of body, we all make mistakes because we are all trained to think along the lines of the mindset that is determined by this illusion of our separation. I call it an illusion because it is not ultimate reality. Ultimate reality is, I am spirit, you are spirit. I am created in perfect innocence, you are created in perfect innocence. Nothing I can do can change the essential reality of this perfect being that God created me to be. Nothing you can do can change the ultimate reality of the perfect innocence in which you were created. Anything we do that is not love is not ultimate reality because only love is ultimate reality. And that is the basic of the Course in Miracles. That is the introductory core concept. Nothing real can be threatened. Nothing unreal exists. Love is real with a capital R. What's happening in this three dimensions, the realm of the body, is real, but real with a little r. Once again, we're not denying it exists. We're not stupid. We, we're not, I'm not minimizing the fact that I see you with my eyes. I'm not even failing to appreciate how magnificent it is that I can see you with my eyes. We're simply saying that over-identification with this plane of existence of itself produces suffering. That is the message of the Buddha that it is an attachment that leads us to grasping. Why? Because this world will never be deep enough to sustain you. 
The roots of this world are not deep enough to sustain you. You will always feel hungry for something more, and you'll always be grasping. That's pure Buddha. Once again, the Course in Miracles is based on universal spiritual themes that are at the heart of all the great religious systems of the world. The Course in Miracles defines enlightenment as a shift in our self-perception from body identification to spirit identification. We live on a, on a planet dominated by a thought system based on the belief that we're separate and that belief in separation produces fear. There are two basic attitudinal filters and these two basic attitudinal filters pre, um, result in two different emotional realities. One basic uh, filter is perception of the world through the level of the bodily senses. One filter is our learning, our conversion. It's not a religious conversion. It is a mental, emotional, and attitudinal conversion to knowing that while my physical senses perceive this world, I can, I can be trained and I can be aided by cosmic forces, which we will be discussing here today, to extend my perception beyond what the physical eyes perceive to what my heart knows to be true. In any situation where I choose to stand on what my heart knows to be true and not just what my physical senses tell me is true, I gain the power because I am then perceiving the light, I am knowing the light, no darkness can stand in the presence of the mind that perceives the light beyond it. And that's what this is about because that shift is a miracle. The miracle is when, yes, I know what you said, but the truth of me is that I know that God created you to be an innocent, loving person, and that is the only truth of who you are. So even though you said something to me that wasn't very nice, I can get all triggered by that, but I can only get triggered by it if I think it's real. I can remember who you really are. I can choose to extend my perception beyond what my physical senses just told me and remember who you are. People will be saying, oh, come on, Marianne, don't you, she was rude. That was, that was a totally passive aggressive comment, you know. Oh, Marianne, come on, don't kid yourself. That, that, excuse me, did you see the look on her face when she said that? Oh, come on, Marianne. The, you know, stop it with the, with the Pollyanna routine. I remind you, Pollyanna, the whole situation changed because she was there. By the end of the book, remember she got there and the old lady was so unhappy and everything. At the end, I think she's marrying the gardener or something. Remember at the end of the book, <laughs> Pollyanna. Anytime somebody tells you, oh, you're being a Pollyanna, say, thank you, I really work on it really hard. I meditate every, <laughs> every single day. In other words, if I just want to keep my perception, stand there, I know what she said. I heard what she said. I saw that look on her face. I can. And that will be, once again, very Buddhist in feel, the wheel of suffering. Action, reaction. I will then react to what you did. I don't think that was very nice, or whatever. And we're on a constant wheel of suffering. There's another way to go, and that's to know what I know. Now, maybe it's going to be hard because I'm triggered, but if I am willing to see a situation differently, I will be given the help by which to do so.